Denny Stillwell of Mac Avenue Records. Denny, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with us today for Jazz Appreciation Month. How are you doing, first and foremost? Yeah, no, my pleasure. It's always uh, it's always an honor to talk to you, and uh, and I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. It's yeah, a good day so, today. So I was asking everybody I've been talking to. So what have you learned in the past year about yourself and about where we are? Because I mean, you have to do so much, but for you personally, what have you learned about yourself during this past year? Well, you mean just the, the shift to the pandemic lifestyle yeah. and, and all of that? Well, I, I realize that I, I do have a capacity for what I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I felt a certain amount of invincibility. Um, yeah, you same know, here. Um, you know, before the, you know, before the pandemic, but the challenges of running my wife and I running two businesses out of the house and, um, and our daughter, you know, suddenly being shifted into school, we experienced the same thing that, you know, millions of other parents were experiencing and the level of anxiety and stress that came along with that, I think was something I had never experienced before. So I, I, I learned about, you know, my capacity there to, to handle, you know, and juggle multiple things. Um, but then also learned, you know, a lot about um, ways that I can improve my life in terms of scheduling and, um, and you know, and, and also just, you know, empathy as well. Um, you know, for everybody else who's going through the exact same thing. Um, there's, there's a lot. We could probably talk on this topic for, you know, for an hour, um, because I think we've all learned so much about ourselves in this process. Yeah. Speaking with Denny Stillwell, Denny, what I kind of learned, which just was kind of a, a nice ancillary effect of all of us, that people have discovered jazz. Either they've rediscovered the music or they've just discovered it for the first time. So I can't tell you how many times we've gotten phone calls or text messages asking who Cecile McLaurin Salvant or who is Emma Cohen? I want to learn more about them or Christian McBride. So it really warms my heart seriously when people are actually finding out for the first time about this wonderful world called jazz. And so it's one of the nice things, one of the silver linings that's come out of 2020 that people discovered what's been sitting in their front yard and backyard <laughs> all this time. But for you, I mean, your, your job, you're in the trenches. So but for you, I want to tell you that to let you know that people are discovering this all over again, or for the first time. Yeah, that's no, that's that's good to know. I think I think we've all been, um, you know, forced to to you know to to try new things and to expand, uh, you know, our own interests, and that so many people have gravitated to the arts. Um, you know, through the pandemic is, is just, a, I think is a, you know, it's a fantastic result, you know, kind of a fantastic byproduct of, of yeah. uh, you know, you know, of, of the pandemic that, you know, that people have been either finding, you know, joy or comfort in, you know, in the arts um, through this process, I think is a, is a, you know, is a nice outcome. Yeah. Speaking of Denny Stillwell. So Denny, for you, for folks who are just discovering this music, what guidance would you give them? Because I mean, you you come to the music from, from pretty much everywhere, <laughs> every entry point. But for folks who are new to this, how would you guide them in, in terms of getting them in there, getting them in this and keeping them here in the uh, jazz band? Uh, wow, that's a, you know, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, if we're, if we're talking about people who have never been exposed to jazz before, um, I guess the first thing I would say is, you know, really keep an open mind, um, you know, uh, uh, about the music. And so many, uh, you know, so many either friends or family members that, you know, in my circle who aren't really familiar with the genre generally say they don't understand it. And not understanding it tends to lead them away from it, right? So, you know, certainly I think doing just a, a, a little bit of research on, the structure of a jazz song, you know, how it all works is really, really helpful. Or if you can find somebody like yourself um, that you can talk to and ask questions about, you know, what am I listening to? What am I hearing? Because the one thing that I hear oftentimes from people is it all sounds like everybody's just playing together. They're not, they're not playing together. Everybody's playing at the same time, but they're all playing yeah. something different, right? Right. But when you take a moment to simply explain that there's this beginning period of the song where everybody's playing together, and then there's this section in the middle 
where one person is the leader and everybody else follows and they trade off that leadership position like during the solo section. And then at the end of the tune, generally, everybody comes together and plays again. The light bulb goes off and they go, oh yeah, okay, all right, well that makes sense. And then as they listen through to that, <laughs> they, they start to understand how it all works together. That's been my experience anyway. And it's, it's satisfying to see people, you know, come around to the, to the genre just because they have a little bit of knowledge or a little bit of understanding about you know, how all the pieces fit together. Yeah, speaking with Denny Stillwell. So Denny, we've actually seen a full circle. When we first started as kids, it was about records. And then it became records of CDs and cassettes, MP3s. Now it's come back. The whole, there's a whole new generation have discovered this music through the power of vinyl <laughs> and records. But for you running a record company, what's that like to see a whole revolution and evolution come back around again? Yeah, it's, um, you know. <laughs> and streaming too. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I was talking with my wife last night about this um, and um, talking about the, you know, the, the interesting time period that we're in right now where we have this, uh, this vinyl resurgence, right? And, you know, you look at vinyl and it's got all, all, all sorts of you know benefits in the audio quality, but you also look at it from a convenience standpoint and it's like the most cumbersome of formats, right? <laughs> it's like the, 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 the record player is the most expensive thing, right? The vinyl is this big, you know, bulky, you know, compared to, you know, yeah. you know compared to, to, to CDs or, or cassettes, if you go back in the day, you know, oh, yeah. it's bulky, it's cumbersome, it takes time to, you know, you got to put it out and you have to care for it a particular way. And, and it's not just that your record player is expensive, but you got all these moving parts on there that are sensitive, right? The stylus right. and, you know, and the, and the, the belt and, and things and break and, and, and yeah. you know, you look at all that stuff and, and you think it's so complex, you know, in a lot of ways. And then at the exact same time, the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have high definition audio being distributed directly to our cell phones, right? The most yeah. convenient and essentially the most, in some cases, the most high quality digital music you can find is literally in the palm of our hands, right? And you've got these two paths that are happening simultaneously right now. Um, and and, and that's, you know, that's an, an amazing place for us to be at the moment, but it's very real. Jazz consumers are, are buying up more and more vinyl right now. Um, you know, it's at a, you know, it's at a record clip, I think. And at the same time, jazz fans are gravitating towards the digital services. Those two paths literally are growing simultaneously. And that's a really, you know, a really fun thing to witness. I don't quite understand the attempt to 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 get the cassette back in circulation. I'm having, I'm having a harder time with that one, right? And and I and I have a uh, I have, you know, a whole bunch of cases from, you know, back in the 70s and 80s full of cassettes in my garage, right? Yeah. I mean, I had a Walkman. I, I grew up on that stuff, right? But, <laughs> but I'm not quite, I haven't bought on yet to the, to the cassette resurgence. <laughs> so but in running a record company, it's got to be like head scratching thinking, okay, I have this product here. I have to get it out, but people want to either is like as fast as I can get it, get it here on my phone or tablet or device, or I actually want the analog physical gatefold album where I can sit down and, and I'm always amazed. How do you like try to balance those worlds of, of service and customers who want it both ways instantly, as well as <laughs> on the analog side? Yeah. You mean how, to, you know, how do record labels adjust to that? Yeah. How do you adjust? Because people want it either the old way or the most yeah. up-to-date way. You know, we like we it's we feel it's our job. I mean, to advocate for the artists and to make sure that fans can find the music any way that they want to, right? And I think all the labels, you know, see that you know that's just part of their responsibility and that's the expectation that you know an artist has of, of their record company is to be on top of the technological changes and to be in the mix there so that if you know, so that if a jazz fan does want to, to stream, you know, an artist that's on Mac Avenue Records that they can do it. And that wh whether they go to Spotify or Apple or Cobuzz or Tidal or Deezer or whatever, that the music is there. But at the same time, 
you know, they can still order it via compact disc through Amazon or through vinyl, um, you know, in, in some way. So it's definitely there's an adjustment and we definitely, you know, at, at the label try to make sure that we're on top of those trends, um, you know, such that it, it's sensible for us to be manufacturing um, or making the music available in those, you know, in those various formats. We, yeah. we just see it as, you know, it's part of what we need to be good at, right? 